hey and welcome back to your number one source for cozy gaming design content. Today's video is going to be about a keyboard I was seeing all over the Instagrams for a while, and because I am a keyboard goblin, I decided it was too good looking to pass up. So in case you're in that same situation, here are my thoughts. The keyboard that I'm going to be talking about is the EpoMaker Dynatab 75X. To start, let's talk specs. As with most mechanical keyboards, there are a bunch of options you have when picking up one of these. Oh, and also just in case it wasn't obvious, this video is very much not sponsored. But either way, you have the option to pick between ANSI and ISO layouts. At the time of writing, there are two color options. This, in my opinion, much superior option uh, with the kind of purple and white uh, color scheme going on. And then there's a gray and black one as well, if you're into that. And you get the option between four different EpoMaker switches, which are the EpoMaker Wisteria Linear, the EpoMaker Wisteria Tactile, the EpoMaker Flamingo Linear Switch, and the EpoMaker Sea Salt Silent. One of the things that impressed me most uh, when I went over to check out the Kickstarter for this. That's right, it was a Kickstarter. I generally don't buy things from Kickstarter companies, but I know Epo Maker very much have the manufacturing know-how to make a keyboard, so I felt perfectly comfortable giving them my money. But, you know, to each their own. But one of the big things that caught my eye about this keyboard, other than the dot matrix display, which I'll show you in a, in a minute, was just how much foam they packed in here. Now it's not unheard of for keyboards to come pre-foamed these days. And for those of you who don't know, putting foam in your keyboard is a common mod that a lot of enthusiasts would do to their boards to give them a much deeper, less reverby feel. It became so popular that major manufacturers decided to adopt the practice, and some started to include it in their keyboards. Now, like I said, the idea is to cut down on case reverb, and the kind of plasticky sound that you get from a keyboard with a plastic shell. And given that this keyboard is kind of in the mid-range when it comes to price, they decided to go with plastic here. So the foam makes a lot of sense, theoretically. Now, I only really have experience with plastic keyboards, personally. My brother is way more into the modding scene than I am, and he has some really nice metal cases, so I have felt what kind of really premium cases feel like, and if I'm being honest, while I definitely can feel a difference, I don't know that I would say that it really justifies the price disparity, at least not with all the really surprisingly great plastic case options that you have on the market these days. One thing I will say though, is that when it comes to plastic cases, the quality varies widely. You can have one which feels so solid you could kill a person with it, but then also another that feels like it's going to crack in half if you look at it funny. What I'm getting at is that I understand the desire to improve and close the gap between cheap plastic shells and the more premium ones. Even if you can't replicate the exact advantages of metal, you can get fairly close if you employ a variety of tricks. I should probably turn this on so people can see. You guys can, you guys can see what's going on here. See? Lights. Ooh. The Dynatab 75X uses four layers of foam. That is a lot of dampening, and a lot of that comes from the fact that the way that they designed the case leaves so much room under the actual PCB that if they didn't do something, this would probably have sounded and felt like a toy. And to their credit, I think it generally does a pretty good job of making sure you don't get any of that reverb when you're typing on it. Other than foam, another trick that manufacturers and modders sometimes use is a big old metal plate at the bottom. Now, in a lot of keyboards, this is more of a flex than a feature, 
It was usually see only seen in really high-end keyboards, but it is a good way to add some heft to your board, which people will immediately identify as quality, even if that isn't necessarily true with the actual construction of the board. They didn't choose to go that way with this keyboard, which I think is kind of unfortunate. Overall, I think this keyboard just feels fairly cheap, and it's not like it feels like it should cost like five bucks or something, but I wouldn't say that it feels like the 140 that they're asking for it. Hey, Editing Nick here. Um, I'm gonna be doing a, little, a, a couple of uh, interjections here throughout the video, just things that I kind of missed when I was actually writing the script, so I'm just gonna be adding them here. Um, I don't think I was exactly fair to it uh, when I was actually filming the video. Honestly, the build quality feels very solid. Um, I think that what makes it feel cheap is, is for me personally, I don't really know how to explain it, but for me, it feels cheaper to have it. And I think maybe, maybe part of it is that there's just so much open space up here. And I think when the, when the screen is on that, it kind of helps that a little bit, but there, there's just so much space up here that I think it feels kind of like one of those cheap office keyboards. So it's not, I don't think it's that the actual keyboard itself is cheap. I think it's that the design lends itself to you associating it with cheap keyboards. And that probably could have been avoided if this, uh, if, if the screen or at least the glass had gone all the way across. And I think I personally would have wanted these switches, these, these buttons, the mode switches and everything to be on this back panel where most people put them. I think that it's, this is probably the weakest part of the keyboard and the build quality in general. It feels tacked on. It's this cheap uh, piece of plastic that they literally just painted. Um, I don't fully understand why I mean, maybe it was, maybe, there are so many things that could happen during manufacturing to make this difficult to make, especially difficult to color match. Um, so I'm not gonna sit here and, and speculate about, oh, well, they could have definitely made that work. I don't know. But I think if that was an issue, that could have been avoided by putting these buttons on this back uh, area here, which as is, is very open and flat. And this is something that nobody's really gonna see when you're using your keyboard. So having these buttons here, I don't think messes with, with, with the kind of overall aesthetic and it could even balance it out if you put them over here. So I don't know. I think it was maybe a poor decision to put them right here. I think it could have maybe helped to take this piece of plexiglass and go all the way across with it. Um, but as it is, it feels a little bit cheap. It's got these kind of sharp angles, which generally I associate with cheaper stuff because it's a little bit, e I don't want to say it's easier to mold, but I don't know. I don't know. You tell me, what, what do you guys, what do you guys feel like? Do, do, do sharper, more rectilinear designs like this at kind of aspect ratios like this do those kind of feel cheap to you? Because I I look at this and it 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 looks kind of cheap. I don't really know how to explain that. I don't really know why that is. I don't know. W what do you guys think? I, I I would be interested to know what you guys think. Um, but overall, I think the build quality is actually very impressive, especially for a board at this price. It's there's like really no flex to it at all. And like, I mean, if I twist it, this comes off a little bit, but because the fix, fixturing for that is not great, but there's really no flex in this direction either, which is, that's impressive. For how much this costs, it feels pretty good. It's just, I think what led me in the video to say that it feels cheap 
is that when I pick this up next to the, my Nufi keyboard, this one weighs so much more than this. So I think when I like picked this up off my desk and replaced it with this, and when I like moved this around, I was used to this weight and this feels really cheap in comparison. If this was the only keyboard that you had got, if you weren't going from like a very solid uh, keyboard, which has metal, it has, it looks like a giant acrylic back, which is gonna add a lot of weight as well. If you go from that to this, like literally just now, putting that down, this feels cheap now in my hands. But it, if your only experience was keyboards that were cheaper than this, this wouldn't feel cheap. This would feel incredibly solid and incredibly uh, worth of the price, frankly. I think that I may, my opinion might be skewed by this keyboard specifically because, and it is more expensive. So it's not necessarily fair for me to compare this directly to that one because that one is $30 more. It's on sale right now at the time that I'm filming this for around the same price as this, but it's, it's MSRP is $30 more than this one. And that's not a small, insignificant delta. I think my opinion has changed a little bit since I filmed most of this video. This is a pretty solid keyboard uh, for the price and for a plastic keyboard. And I, I, I just, I wanna make sure that I'm being fair to this because I think you could probably watch the rest of this video and think that I, I don't like this keyboard and that I think it's like a ripoff or something. Not at all. That is not, that could not be further from my opinion of this keyboard. I don't know, I don't really know, what is it, Epo Maker? I don't really know Epo Maker as in, like, I don't know the ethics of their company. I don't know if they have had any real, real scandals or whatever, but based on this keyboard, I, I'm impressed. And, and I think this is a good offering. And I'm ex especially impressed because it's, you know, a, uh, what's it called? A Kickstarter and high quality things coming from Kickstarters is not necessarily guaranteed. Uh, but yeah, I, I just wanted to clarify a few things, make sure that I didn't come across like I was just hating this keyboard. See, I'm comparing this to my favorite keyboard that I own, the Nufi Field 75, another 75%, which costs right around the same price. Now, when it's not on sale, it's about 170 bucks. So that's not an insignificant difference, but I think the jump in quality more than justifies the jump in price. With the Nufi, I feel like I'm getting every penny's worth. It's heavy, the industrial design is absolutely superb, and I can't explain to you just how much I love having this handle. I found I move my keyboard around a lot on my desk, and being able to just grab it and slide it to where I need it is great. Plus, it's got all these macro buttons, which I can assign to do anything. I'm saying all of this because when I compare my experience between the two, it's absolutely no question. I would pick the Nufi every time. Now, yes, there are little annoyances with the Nufi, but every product is going to have those, and there are just as many on the Epo Maker. But when it comes to the experience of actually using it, I don't really think that there's much of a contest. Ultimately, what you're paying for is the screen. And don't get me wrong, it is really cool. If I could add it to my Nufi, you bet I would. But is it worth sacrificing a solid build and a great feel? And in my personal opinion, much better aesthetics? I don't think so. But okay, while I may not be the biggest fan of the overall quality of this board, I do still like it for a lot of reasons, and I don't just want to crap all over it. And I don't like complaining in general, so let's talk about the things that I do love about it. Now, I went for, as you can see, the best colorway. I was drawn to this one, in case you couldn't tell, for its notably retro-inspired design, kind of taking inspiration from the Super Nintendo. And I went with the Sea Salt Silent Switches because I hadn't actually tried Silent Switches before and I wanted to give that a go. My personal preference 
is usually tactile or linear, but like I said, I wanted to give this a shot, and I figured this would be a good opportunity. After all, it's hot swap, so if I don't like them, I can always change them out for something I do like. I wanted to talk about my experience with the actual switches themselves. I just kind of mentioned that they're not necessarily my normal pro uh, preference. I do find the performance of them to be actually very good. Um, I don't know if you can really hear what, what, what they're kind of like, but I, I found them to be, uh, you know, generally pretty, pretty silent, not, especially in comparison to my normal uh, linear or tactile preference. I found them to be pleasant. They're not, uh, they're not like mushy or anything. They do still kind of have a bit of a, uh, a bit of feedback to them, but it's just nothing compared to like a tactile switch. Overall, I, I generally enjoyed the experience of these silent switches. However, I, st I still think they're not my preference. I don't think I really care for silent switches. Um, I do like a little bit more of that, s that auditory feedback. Um, my girlfriend in particular really hates them. She likes clicky switches. Um, and so these were like the polar opposite of what she was at all interested in. But importantly, um, something I didn't really mention in, in the video was the keycap uh, performance, I guess. I found that these, there's a bit of shine through on these, which is not intentional. Um, I think that the LEDs behind them get too bright for the material of keycaps that they're using. There's this kind of diffuse, just kind of hot spot at the top of the key, which, you know, some people isn't gonna really bother them. But for me personally, it, it just makes it feel cheap when you can kind of see the lights through the actual keycaps. Now, obviously that's kind of one of the advantages of mechanical keyboards is that you can change that. You can, if you really wanted to, you could just switch out all the keycaps, but I feel like the stock keycaps coming and not being, not them not having fixed that issue uh, is a little bit unfortunate. And that's kind of, that is, to be fair to them, that's that's kind of inherent with um, white keycaps, unless they're very thick, a very dense material, white is going to just let more light through. Um, that's just part of plastic. Uh, so I have a feeling if they had wanted to do white keycaps like this, they would have had to use a much higher end material, which would have driven the cost up. Shipping was actually surprisingly fast. It was coming from China, so I'm used to those kind of taking a lot longer than this did. And I was fortunate enough to have it show up literally before 9 a.m. That's crazy to me because packages that come to my house usually don't get here till around two at the earliest. I have no clue if your experience would be the same and I suspect it wouldn't, but either way, I was very happy with the shipping experience. As for what they include, I was, again, happily surprised. They include a whole ass silicone USB-C to A cable. The quality of this cable is surprisingly good and compared to cables that I've gotten included with other things, this was a huge upgrade. I'm serious, this thing is awesome. I think I'm gonna be using this as my keyboard cable for every keyboard that I use. It just looks and feels so good and there's this nice little light on it to tell you when it's connected, which is pretty cool. Both ends are high quality and give pretty nice purchase when plugged in. I think this is my favorite cable that I own, hands down. And that's saying something because I also have the one that's included with the Nothing Phone 2, uh, but this is way better. Other than that, there's your standard keycap and switch puller and some other little goodies like a wireless dongle and some Mac keys, which at time of writing are exclusive to the purple and white version. Apparently they had some issues getting the uh, gray and black versions figured out with the factory. I don't know. Now the keyboard itself, overall, ignoring some minor quality issues like a kind of loose USB-C connection and the awkward and tacked on look of the mode switch, there isn't much to complain about. If you liked the images you saw of it, then the aesthetics are gonna be exactly what you expected them to be. And overall, I can't really fault the quality. There isn't much flex and it doesn't feel like it's creaking or anything when it's in use. 
I would say the main draw really is the screen though. If this looks appealing to you at all, then you're probably going to love this board. And I honestly can't blame you if you do. It's a beautiful dot matrix display and there are a ton of community created animations that you can download and have playing on your screen. Plus, they make it pretty easy to make your own custom animations with their software as well. Now, as with all animation, it's time consuming, but I think it's well worth the effort if you have the patience for it. I think it's just such a cool addition to a keyboard, and I wish it were a more common feature on other boards. Other than the display, I really love the Super Nintendo colorway they have going on here. I think it's a really cool combination of colors that you don't really get from a lot of designs these days. There is a bit of a resurgence in older design styles recently, and I'm really glad that we're seemingly moving a little bit away from the sterile designs of minimalism, and I think that's great. And that is a trend that I hope we don't see go away for a while. Overall, I think the best thing about this board is just that it's not afraid to be loud. It's loud in every aspect. It's big, it's angular, it's got a giant gaudy screen right in the middle. And if you get this colorway, it's going to be white, and so it's going to be sticking out at, you know, a pretty solid amount of setups, unless you have an all-white setup, which probably isn't maybe the best idea with a desk pad. And I think more designs need to take this approach. I know it's a harder line to toe than something like pure minimalism, where you can just stick to the basic shapes, but I think when people are able to balance the different elements, louder designs like this one can be way more appealing than the safer, less opinionated ones. So yes, it has flaws. I think there are maybe better value boards out there, and you wouldn't be wrong for saying this is an ugly keyboard. That is going to be totally subjective, completely up to you. I think that there's room for improvement with the industrial design here, but I also think that there is a beauty to what they have and I did enjoy my time with it. I ultimately won't be continuing to daily drive it. I may hop on and off every once in a while, but I won't be daily driving it because I personally prefer the much more solid feel of the new fee. But I really love to see these kind of interesting ideas be made more affordable than they have been in the past. And I think this keyboard is a pretty good example of how much tighter the competition is in the keyboard space. Because aside from some like heftiness quality issues that I have with it, this keyboard is really damn close to feeling incredibly premium. But that's all for today's video. I hope you enjoyed this one, and let me know what you think about this keyboard down in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe and all of that stuff, and until next time, I hope you have a great day.